The Lucy Show. Starring Lucille Ball. Co-starring Vivian Vance. One. Is Chrissy going to take all these clothes just for one week at Sandy Cove? That's right. Here's her list. Six pairs of capris, four sweaters, two pairs of Bermuda shorts, three sweatshirts, one pair of jeans, a jacket, four pairs of sneakers, two shifts, five bathing suits, and if for some strange reason she should want to look like a girl, one dress. <laughs> Has she got luggage enough for all these clothes? Oh, sure. Maybe I'll have to carry my things in a paper bag. <laughs> <laughs> you can borrow my suitcase. Too late. Chris beat me to it. Oh, dear. <laughs> Lucy, I certainly admire your nerve chaperoning a club of teenage girls for a whole week. Well, I think it'd kind of be fun. Are you sure you don't want to change your mind to come along? No, thanks. I wouldn't fit in. I'm too old to be a teenager and too young to die. <laughs> oh, Debbie Westcott's father is the creepy. Chris, I hardly think it proper for you to call your school principal a creep. But he won't let Debbie go with us to Sandy Cove. And if Debbie Westcott can't go, the other girl's parents won't let them go either. So it looks like the whole trip is off. Well, did you tell Mr. Westcott that I was going with you? Yes, but he still said no. What a drag. Oh, I just think that's a shame. I'm finally old enough to go to Sandy Cove. And what does that old rinky-dink do? Chop. <laughs> well, wait, maybe I could call Mr. Westcott and get him to change his mind. Oh, that'll be the day. Well, it's worth a try. Go ahead, Lucy. Give old Ricky Dick a ding-a-ling. <laughs> Hello? Hello, Mr. Westcott? Yes? Uh, this is Mrs. Carmichael. Uh oh. Chris's mother? Uh, in case you don't remember me, at the last PTA cake sale, I was the pineapple upside down. Oh, yes. Uh, what can I do for you, Mrs. Carmichael? Well, it's about the girls' beach party. I was hoping you'd change your mind about Debbie. Sorry, Mrs. Carmichael, I can't do that. I have my daughter's welfare to think of, and I have the reputation of Danfield High School to consider. But, Mr. Westcott, I'm going to be the chaperone, and I plan to supervise the girls very closely. Uh, nothing personal, of course, but one woman can't possibly keep a close watch on eight girls for a whole week. Oh, uh, uh didn't Debbie tell you there are going to be two chaperones? <laughs> uh, yes, the other chaperone is a very dear friend of mine. She's a lovely older person. <laughs> and dependable, and she's had loads of experience with younger people. Uh, she's practically a nanny. A nanny, eh? Well, of course, if there are two of you, all right. In that case, Debbie can go. But Mrs. Carmichael, if anything goes wrong, I can promise you I'll abolish every girls' club at Danfield High. Oh, Mr. Westcott, you don't have to worry. You will never regret this. Thank you. Goodbye. Oh, gee, thanks, Mom. Oh, you're the greatest. You've got to call the girl. How about Lucy? <laughs> now, Viv, I don't blame you for being mad, but having two chaperones is what sold him. Now, be a sport. What do you say? Nanny doesn't live here anymore. <laughs> Come on, Viv. Say yes. Nothing doing. 
morning. But Jerry and Sherman are going to visit Uncle Ned. You don't have a single thing to do next week. Oh, no, I face the boring prospect of sleeping till noon, sitting around the house nibbling chocolates and reading trashy novels. You can do the same thing as Sandy Cove and get a tan, besides. <laughs> well, come on, say yeah. Oh, all right. Good girl. Oh, wait a minute, I can't go. Why not? Chris is using my suitcase. Oh, well, uh, don't you worry. I'll take care of that. When I go to the store, I'll get you a paper bag, too. <laughs> for them to say. It wasn't. What'd they say? They called us two dada gucky yaksus. <laughs> Is that bad? It means we're two old fogies. <laughs> How did you know that? Oh, it's the kind of language teenagers speak when they don't want us old fogies to know what they're saying. <laughs> How? How'd you ever learn it? Little Jerry figured it out and slipped me the code. Oh. <laughs> Oh, what a mess this place is. You know, Viv, the kids have got a point. It would be kind of a drag spending a whole week here with two old fogies. That's what chaperones are supposed to be. Not necessarily. We could be two young fogies. <laughs> we could turn ourselves into teenagers. And just how do you propose to do that short of plastic surgery? <laughs> talk like teenagers. <laughs> What's that? A mashed potato. <laughs> Lucy, I think you got lumps in your gravy. <laughs> Bill, don't you see? We gotta get to be part of the gang. That way we can keep an eye on the girls without them resenting us. Okay, we'll talk about it in the morning. No, we're gonna talk about it tonight. I'm going to teach you a few basic teenage slang words right now. Now, for instance, choice, groovy, and tough all mean good. Tough means good? Yeah. Oh, boy, these teenagers just don't make any kind of sense today. No, they don't make sense like we used to, Viv. Greetings, Gate. <laughs> <laughs> Let's cut a rug. Hubba, <laughs> hubba. 
bob. <laughs> okay, tough means good. Yeah. Now try to think like a teenager. Fink, creepy, scuzzy, grumpy, drippy, raunchy, and flaky. What do they sound like? Like Snow White got hold of the wrong dwarfs. <laughs> They all mean bad. They do? Yeah. Oh. And diddly, 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 that means and so forth and so forth and so forth. Good. If I ever get stuck, I'll just say diddly, diddly, diddly. <laughs> now, now when you leave a place, you split. When you leave a place, you split. Yeah. And when somebody funny cracks you up. And when you're enjoying yourself, you're having a blast. See, it's very easy. Easy? That's tough. There, now you're catching on. <laughs> Lucy? What? Don't you think I ought to shut the window? And shut out that marvelous ocean breeze? Oh, boy, we're really going to sleep tonight, Viv. Okay. <laughs> Good night. Pleasant dreams, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, there's a mosquito in here. He must have come in on that marvelous ocean breeze. <laughs> that was not a mosquito. Mosquitoes come later in the summer. Well, now, this one may have come a little early to take advantage of the off-season rake. <laughs> oh, you're right. And he brought a friend to share expenses. <laughs> Oh, Lucy, this is terrible. Now, what are we going to do? I think I saw some mosquito netting here. Oh, to think I could be home with a bonbon and a book instead of in this flaky place. Here, <laughs> spread it across the whole uh, right. bed, both beds. Uh, plenty oh. down here and plenty for our heads up at the top. Oh, 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 <laughs> more like an old beekeeper. <laughs> Good night. Good night. Good <laughs> thing we got this netting. The biggest mosquito I ever saw. Please go to Sleepsville. <laughs> oh, he is a big one. If I didn't know he was a mosquito, I'd swear he was a bat. Ah, 
Bunville moved about, we found the action. Oh, boy, Bunville. Hi, gang. Keep it blasting. Keep it going down there, all out for fun. <laughs> Bill, what are we going to do with him? Well, I don't know. Where's that bat when you need him? <laughs> We're going to have to do something drastic to shake him. It looks like Gluesville. Yeah. Really? Hi there, gang. We got him to make the action. Hello there, kid. Hi there, everybody. Hey, how about this weather, babe? Ain't it tough? Oh, it is groovy faint. <laughs> Carmichael Jazz, just think of me as one of the chicks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a chop on that Mrs. Bagley. <laughs> uh, how about another song, Bill? Yeah, yeah. 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 Hey, one at a time. And hey, you know, big girls don't cry. Yeah. Hey, we know that, Bill. Yeah, we know that, but let's do it, huh? Big <laughs> girls don't cry. I 
Won't it be nice to be underwater and get away from that overgrown gidget? Yeah! yeah. yeah. from the bottom of the ocean to hear my own daughter say a thing like that? Oh, Mom, it's just that we kids don't want you and Aunt Biff to act like teenagers. You don't? No, if you're going to be chaperones, act like chaperones. Well, last night you called us two old fogies. Well, that's because you made us go to bed so early. It didn't mean anything. Oh, I'm sorry, honey. I'm sorry if I embarrassed you. I'll try to make it up to you. You ask the fellas to come over and we'll have a party tonight. A party? Yeah, yeah, and Aunt Viv and I'll be chaperones and we promise to stay way in the background and do nothing but chap. Oh, that's neat, though. Yeah. Wait a minute, Mom. Old fogey? How long have you been able to understand our secret language? Oh, a couple of years now. <laughs> sure. <laughs> diddly, diddly, diddly. <laughs> like ourselves again. Uh-huh. I wasn't cut out to be a teenager, even when I was a teenager. <laughs> okay, Debbie, what time are your folks going to come up? I hope never. Nobody else's parents are coming up. Oh, why did I have to be a principal's daughter? It's Freaksville. <laughs> it's great, Miss Colonel. Thank you. Well, Chris, is this a beautiful blast uh, party? It's a wonderful party, Mom. I warned you about wild parties. Oh, Mr. Westcott, this ain't a wild party. We were chasing a bat. Uh, oh, come now. <laughs> we were right, we were right, really. I don't see any bats. Do you, Elizabeth? No, Kenneth, I do not. Well, it was here a minute ago. We must have chased it away. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Elizabeth, wait in the car. I'll handle this. Yes, Kenneth. But, Daddy, there was a bat. He must have blown out the window. Debbie, you pack your things. But Daddy! And your club is under suspension until further notice. Oh, Mr. Westcott, that's not fair. You must believe me, this was very innocent. I know a rumble when I see one. Oh. 